The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus came to Galilee, to John at the Jordan, to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me. Jesus said to him in reply, Allow it for now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. So, it is Championship Weekend. You know a lot of prayers are going up for the teams involved. The celebration of the baptism of Jesus rounds out the Christmas celebration. This feast is related to the Feast of the Epiphany in many ways. The Feast of the Epiphany was the showing of Christ to the outside world. The Feast of the Baptism of the Lord introduces Jesus and the beginning of his public ministry. The Baptism of Jesus was an event that was now without controversy back then and even now among his followers. The Baptism of Jesus was a source of embarrassment to the early church. Even John the Baptist himself, as we see in today's Gospel, found it inappropriate that he should baptize Jesus, and he tried to prevent it. Why was this? Showing him to the Gentile world, the Magi who arrived were representing the Gentile world. Heretofore, at that point, uh, it was the the guarded Jewish secret that the Messiah was theirs. And the Epiphany was a celebration that he was for all of his people. The baptism of the Lord is a celebration of the beginning of his public ministry. Jesus being introduced and beginning his ministry in our world. The baptism of Jesus was an event that was not without controversy. Back then, and even today, the question, why did he choose to be baptized? The baptism uh, of Jesus was a source of embarrassment to many of the early Christians. Even John himself protests, saying, you should be baptizing me, not I baptizing you. And what does Jesus say? Let it be for now. John found it inappropriate that he should be baptizing the Messiah. Why was it? Because John's baptism was a baptism unto repentance and forgiveness of sins. And one thing the early Christian church was certain of Jesus was free of sin. Jesus was no sinner. He did not stand in need of repentance. And so the question then, and even the question now, why was Jesus choosing to be baptized by John? It's a pretty <clears throat> important question. And over the years, there's been great amount of writing. You know, no paper ever refused ink, and there certainly is plenty of ink regarding this issue. Why did Jesus go down into the waters to be baptized? Why do you think? Stir it up a little. Pardon? Supporting? Supporting John, yes, and his mission and ministry, absolutely. What else? Pardon? Example, setting an example for us, certainly.
but he was submitting to a baptism unto repentance and the forgiveness of sins, and some people couldn't get over that. Here is the reason. It's a very important reality at the beginning of his public ministry because it provides us a powerful insight into Jesus' ministry. Jesus accepted John's baptism, went down into the waters, because it was a symbolic action. He wanted to be one with all sinners and show them that oneness by actually doing it. He wanted to show a solidarity with the people that he had come to help. And for this reason, it was important not that he just be baptized, but that he be baptized publicly. So the people would see it. They would reflect on it and think about it. And think about its affect in their own lives. In this special action, he was identifying with sinners. When he stepped into the waters of the Jordan River, he was in effect saying to people, saying to all of us, I'm on your side. Remember that great melody from Simon and Garfunkel? going back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever it was. Bridge over troubled water. He's saying, that's who I am. Not a lot of the stuff that we preach regularly and he's going to get us and all of that. Here I am, I'm here for you, that you may know healing and forgiveness and love and care. And so he would say to John, don't worry about it, John. Let it happen. Allow it for now, because through this, all righteousness will be fulfilled. The father approved of what he was doing. He set his seal on him, anointing him with the oil of compassion for his mission. What Jesus did on that day in the Jordan was to serve as a model for his public ministry. He would not keep himself away from sinners. It's such an important detail. This was the community that he came into in, in Galilee. The religious leadership kept themselves apart from sinners. They would have nothing to do with them. They weren't welcome in synagogue until they had repented and taken care of penance. Jesus' presence is a totally different declaration. He would not keep himself apart from sinners. He would not wait for them to come to him. He would go to them. Remember the big contentious issue? He sits and eats with sinners and tax collectors. That was the religious leadership. We still haven't gotten over that problem in our world extremely judgmental and critical. That's how they were. And Jesus stands out in the midst of all of this. He would seek out sinners, live among them, he would befriend them, and he would welcome them. Jesus had no intention of standing apart or putting himself above sinners, the ones he came to save. A modern-day expression of that might be one from the previous century when leprosy broke out in the Hawaiian uh, Islands in the last century, the authorities responded by establishing a leper colony on the remote island of Molokai. The victims were snatched away from their families and their homes and sent to this island to perish. Moved by their plight, a young Belgian priest, Father Damien de Wuster, he asked to be allowed to minister to the lepers. Straight away he realized there was only one effective way to do this, and that was to go and live among them. 
Initially, he went to the island, he, having received permission. And at first, he attempted to minister to them from a distance, staying apart, providing them what they needed in terms of food and in terms of proclamation of the good news. But soon he realized that he needed to live among them in order to gain their trust. And as a result, he contracted leprosy himself. The reaction of the colony was immediate and heartfelt. He was now one of them. There was no longer any need to keep a safe distance. The lepers now had one among them, one among themselves who could speak and who could talk with authority about leprosy, about brokenness, about rejection, and about public shame. One of their own who could speak the language. Jesus' appearance in our midst and celebration of his baptism today, celebration of his ministry, the purpose of his ministry, and the purpose of his ministry in and for our lives. But it'll happen only if we let it. We've got to intentionally want to engage that ministry. And his baptism was the central celebration of that reality. We've got to want the assistance that he provides us, and we've got to claim it. Nobody is going to force it upon us. Imagine what a difference it would make for us as Eucharistic people each week when we come. We have that fundamental intention and belief. He is right here. He wants to speak to me. He wants to direct and lead and guide me. What a difference it would make. Imagine we might pick up the songbook and sing, and he might speak to us through it. Or in his word, he may speak to us. What a difference. It's interesting that for all of these years, we as Catholics, we make a great effort to show up and be there. And then we get there. What do we expect? What do we hope for? We hope that the grace of our baptism would come alive and that we would be connected with him and that we would hear him as he speaks to us in this community.